Painters have been obsessing about food since the Greek artist Zoysis painted his bunch of grapes so realistically they were attacked by birds. However, the real obsession with painting food didn't begin until the 17th century when the still life first bloomed as a viable painting genre in the Netherlands and Belgium. Not surprisingly, in that preparing food was a predominantly female pursuit. Some of the first and best food still lifes were painted by women. Still Life with Pie, painted by Clara Peters, is as delectable now as it was nearly 400 years ago. Basically, food still lifes can be divided into three categories. There is the breakfast still life, the Dutch call them unpronounceably on bites, the kitchen still life and the banquet still life. Clara Peters' work tends to fall into the last category. It is rich, elegant and fairly formal. Peter Clay's still life with fish and bread from about the same time is a breakfast still life. Much simpler, seemingly haphazard in arrangement and more along the line of peasant fare with its filleted herring, pewter plate, beaker of beer, eating utensils and freshly baked roll. The colours are subdued, but not unappetising. The kitchen still life, on the other hand, was first popularised not by a Dutchman, but by the French painter Jean-Baptiste Simeon Chardin, early in the 18th century. Perhaps his most famous is one of his first, still life with rayfish. This painting alone, with its gutted stingray, hung from the stone wall in the background its raw fish and oysters, numerous jugs, bottles and other kitchen utensils arranged informally on a white tablecloth which partially covers a sloan slab, won him instant acclaim as a painter and membership in the French Academy. Off to one side a hungry house cat greedily eyes the impromptu feast. Perhaps because of their national reputation as culinary artists, ever since Chardin, the French have always had a way with food in their art. Gustave Caillebotte and his fruits displayed on a stand dating from 1882 demonstrates that the realists were not the only ones fascinated by the subject. While Cézanne saw such items as merely shapes, colours and textures to be played with compositionally, Kayaboit's fruit stand is a dieter's delight, a rich, colourful sight for hungry eyes. In the United States, though the still life tradition is rich and long, it has not been as edible. The peels of Philadelphia sometimes painted some pretty appetising fruit during the early 1800s, and Wayne Thiebaud just kills me with his bakery items. But perhaps the most striking food still lifes to come out of the 20th century belong to Andy Warhol, though he never painted a peach, plum, pear or pomegranate in his whole life. Consistent with the 20th century's mass marketing of packaged foods, his Campbell's soup cans as well as his Coca-Cola bottles, the ultimate 20th century food, are symbolic rather than literal, underlining the fact that we no longer have to see the food itself to desire it.